So, Daffy Paffy. These names make them a laughy. You know them, I know them, maybe your grandma knows them. The French House Duo. We've done two videos on their album so far, this being the third. As the last video, hit the like goal. Again, but nah, seriously. Thank you to everyone liking. It shows me you actually like the video. Isn't that crazy? Human After All, the third studio album from the French duo, releasing a whole four years after their last project. They're keeping busy twiddling their thumbs. And what did they have to show for the wait? <laughs> well, at least it was something. The album after Discovery, this one marked the return of Daft Punk back in album mode. And after the continued rise from their last album, new fans and returning listeners were eager to get a whiff of that new Daft Punk smell. And when they finally got it, some say it smelled like something else. This album is a weird one, from the videos to the songs to the history to the newspapers. We'll get into all that real soon. So get your micro bits ready and be sure to leave a like if you're interested. Cause in this video, we're gonna be going into Daft Punk's third studio album, talk about it a bit, and figure out what makes Human After All the weirdest Daft Punk album. There's some doozies in here. Here, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So, let's just jump into it, shall we? After the release of Discovery, the boys would take the following years to continue promoting their second album with singles all the way up till November of 2003. During those years, the boys would also be working on their Interstellar movie, with that also finishing and releasing in 2003. Production on Human After All ended up starting in, you guessed it, the next year in 2004 with a completely new approach. The direction of this album was different right from the jump, with them taking a left turn on the way they approached their music, hoping to deviate away from the glossy sounds on Discovery and go for a more minimalistic sound, but we wouldn't know to what extent until the album came out. But as Thomas put it in an interview a bit later, the boys were quote, definitely seduced at the time by the idea of doing the opposite. Huh. Daft Punk did absolutely no interviews or said any statements to promote the album up until its release, as their only official statement prior to release was quote, we believe human after all speaks for itself. Uh huh. See, the boys were not lying when they said they wanted to do the opposite of Discovery, as Discovery took a total of around two years to make. So to counter this, they famously limited themselves this time around to a production time of only, get this, two and a half months. From middle of September to the beginning of November of that year. Six weeks. That is not a lot of time, y'all. For these 10 tracks, one of them is a 20 second interlude, mind you. And four of those weeks were spent doing the mixing and mastering, which means that, with all things considered, the album only had two weeks dedicated to the composition and creativity of the songs. Do you see where this is going yet? The album released on the 14th of March in 2005, and in it, the album takes on a more darker, serial approach to the music, leaning on intentional minimal sampling and focusing more on guitar work, along with their synths and drum machine. The album sounds so industrial, so cold and dark with its song, and if you ask me, it does that really well in conveying those feelings. And when paired with the videos and the album cover, you start to see what they are going for this time around. This album isn't supposed to make you feel free and happy, it's supposed to make you wet your pants. With their whole robot theme, this album at its core is meant to show the opposite side of technology, the scary side, the robot takeover side, and I think an album like this was needed in their discography to get the full picture and to double down on their robot caricatures to show that just as technology can be good, it can also be really, really bad. And oh boy, what a segue. This album is... <sighs> I don't want to say it's bad, because it's not bad. But understanding the direction it took, and seeing what we have now, I can't help but think, it could have been so much more. As stated earlier, Daft Punk were purposely going for this minimalistic, simplistic approach this time around, and that's all good. But there's a difference between being smart in your simplicity, and being lazy. And unfortunately for most, music-wise, this album feels like the latter. The production time shows, dude. With the songs on here, resorting to basic two to four bar loops with minimal shifts in progression and song structure. That's not to say they didn't do the same thing on their previous albums, but on those albums, they would include elements to their songs, such as bridges, pre-choruses, and extra sounds as the songs progressed, making a seven minute track a treat to sit through. On here, once you've heard the first four to eight bars, you've basically heard the whole song, albeit with minor changes sprinkled throughout. Positive reviews around the time looked at the album as sort of a commentary on pop music in the 21st century and them poking fun at that and sure you can look at it like that 
but to me and to most that feels like a stretch as i honestly don't think that's what their intention was going in manuel coming out after the release saying that staying silent was quote one of their biggest mistakes they have ever made jeez in retrospect you can look back on this album now and appreciate it for what it is but back then when it came out you have to remember that daft punk releases music so sparsely that this coming out in the state that it was in did feel like a letdown but the good tracks are really good some arguing that those tracks alone actually carry the album so whether the album is good or not by itself is up to you now contrary to what i've been sounding like this whole time personally i like the album but like most it's mainly due to retrospective after hearing the remixes on later things like alive and dj hero which i'll get to later between the three i don't think people are picking this over discovery and homework most of the time now, that's not to say there aren't some bangers on here. Trust me, they still know how to make a good song. The title track is an amazing opener. Always was. Technologic still with that classic refrain, and Robot Rock is always a bop. But I feel like the near 5 minute runtime actually hurts the song more than it helps it. Also, while we're on the subject, what the f*** is up with that doll thing in the Technologic video? Like, this is legit nightmare fuel. Primetime also having a video, with all of these videos adding to that uncanny feeling of the album. But nothing more than something they would release later on, in my opinion, which will get to soon. On release, the thing was met with mostly mixed reviews, and on Metacritic, the album sits at a 57 from critics. It's got a 7.4 from fans though, but I'll tell you now that that was a lot lower when it came out. Why it's gone up, I'll get to in a sec. The lead single for the album was Robot Rock, released a month later in April of that year. Each single has these cover arts that mimic the album cover with the TV, but something else in the TV related to the song. It's pretty cool. The album also leaked online months before its release, and people thought it was so bad, they actually thought this was a fake released on purpose to combat leakers and that the real album would sound way different those poor fools now remember earlier when i said that the album is now being hailed by fans and critics alike well that's no mistake as there was this small little thing the boys would do in 06 07 this alive tour or something <laughs> no but seriously this would be the boys first tour since the daff and direct tour in 97 a world tour from april of 06 to december of 07 this tour would re-pump the energy into daft punk and get eyes on them again as they would remix and mash up their pre-existing stuff to make new original mixes, including songs from Human After All. And in an almost unanimous decision, everybody remembered that Daft Punk were still, as they always were, electronic geniuses and delivered a live performance that really brought new life into their catalog and brought the songs on Human After All and their discography even to their fullest potential. As they would say, letting fans really see the connection of their three albums. They would release their live album to critical acclaim and win the Grammy for Best Dance Slash Electronic Album in 2009. This was also the time that opened fans up to the original album, causing people to go back and re-listen to their discography, including Human, and now in hindsight, people love the thing. Their manager was even saying that people were legit coming back and apologizing to Daft Punk after hearing Alive, which is funny. Now you'd think, just like Discovery and Homework getting movies, Human After All would naturally get a tie-in movie as well. And boy could you be more wrong, what is wrong with you? No, unfortunately, we would not be getting a tie-in movie this time around, but that doesn't mean we would get nothing. As the next year in 06, Daft Punk would release their second full-length feature film titled Daft Punk's Electroma, or just Electroma for short, directed by the punks, an avant-garde science fiction film. The story revolves around two robots, not played by the actual robots, on a quest to become human, which why would you want to do that? You age. This is an interesting movie, as although looking exactly like how the album would sound, does not feature any music from Human After All, at all. Instead going the direction of using music from other artists, from Todd Rundgren to Curtis Mayfield. Like honestly, you could put any song on the album on top of clips from this movie, and it wouldn't feel out of place. Not surprisingly, Tomas has stated in the past that although separate, both things are supposed to inflict that feeling of paranoia, aloneness, lifelessness, and just general unsettling fear of technology, and the distance between human and machine, which is reflected by the album's simplistic approach and the movie's avant-garde direction. So although not actual tie-ins, you can link them in spirit. They even use the ending scene for their departure video, which a lot of people thought that was a new original clip. I, I don't know. This movie, while not one of my personal faves, is still worth a look if you're interested, as there's some good scenes in here. But in that same year, in 2006, just like they did with their album before, Daft Punk would actually release a remix album of this album titled Human After All Remixes, which was exclusive to Japan. Oh, you Japanese, you just keep winning. Internationally, we would have to wait until 2014 to get it, almost a decade later, albeit with some new additional tracks. This had 10 remixes on it, with each track being remixed by a different artist. You got some names on here, from Soul Wax to Sebastian to even Justice, which you have to remember was 2006, one year before their debut album Cross 
Ross in 07. At this point, they were getting known for their remixes of other artists such as Britney Spears and NERD. Daft Punk actually offered Justice to be the opener for their Alive 2007 tour, but they declined it because they said they wanted to quote, make a name for themselves on their own. Ha! <laughs> Good luck with that, am I right? Honestly, these guys might deserve their own video in the future, as believe it or not, when Cross came out, they were seriously rivaling Daft Punk for that number one French house spot, but that's its own thing. So back to Daft Punk. This remix album was released in March of 2006 to also not so great reviews, and honestly, I don't blame them. For the names on here, this album really lacks in terms of cohesiveness and any grounding with its sound, as it's all over the place. Hmm, that sounds familiar. Of course, just like the last remix album, there's a couple good songs on here. Emphasis on a couple, but the best song on here for me is without a doubt that Sebastian remix of Human After All. That song is a legit sonic roller coaster. Holy smokes. But Bites, that's just like your opinion, man. I really like that 9 minute alter ego remix that slaps up my 3 person rave, man. And hey, that's cool. Keep raving it up. You could 100% hate the original album. That's also cool. But for me, and a lot of others, this remix album wasn't it. But fret not, remix lovers, as 3 years later, in 2009, the internet would come together and deliver us this gem of an album, a new remix album titled Remix After All, a fan album in which 10 different music blogs all picked one song from the original album and got their favorite remixer to do a remix of it. Not super known names or anything, more online buzzing artists. They even did a remix of On Off, which absolutely slaps. I didn't even know that was possible. One of the members of acclaimed DJ group C2C, Mr. Thomas Adam. <laughs> I'm saying Thomas, but it's, it's actually Thomas. <laughs> Oh man, too much, too much Daft Punk. Mr. Thomas Adam would also do a similar remix album, his titled After the Robots, as a tribute to the original record. Both of these albums go hard, and if you want more human, definitely give these a look. They're totally worth it. So, with all this said and done, this album is a polarizing one. It's strange to see an album get panned on release, and then acclaimed years later. Not to say it doesn't happen, but it's always strange to see. This album didn't revolutionize anything by any means, but it was only under the right circumstances that people finally saw what it was trying to do and went back to appreciate the simplicity it was doing. It's not topping any decade end list, but it's a vital part in their career and would set the groundwork for an amazing spew of remix culture, as personally, I think that's where this album shines the most. Because of its simplicity, the amount of remixes and covers that have come out of it, it's truly amazing. And even if not for the music, that in itself and the original vision of the album is something to be commended for. So why are the remix albums so bad? Like, what is going on here? So yeah, what do you guys think of Human After All? Is this your real number one Daft Punk album? Or are you brainwashing this out of your memory? Leave a comment, I'd love to know. And subscribe if you enjoyed it. After all, we have one more album to go over, if you want it. And that is the illustrious final studio album, Random Access Memories. This is the big one. But of course, we can only do that if we hit the like goal. And as you guys just keep destroying that button, it's only natural we double down. And as this is the last one, we gotta go bigger go home right so in daft punk fashion the like goal for this video is 909 yep that's the goal i'm genuinely curious to see how this one's gonna pan out that drake video just face planted so I don't know. so until then keep your helmets on and i will catch you all later cue the outro for the third time You know, it's so funny. I really wasn't expecting this video to be this long. Like, I was trying to get this video down to like eight minutes. That was my goal. <laughs> there was just so much I wanted to talk about. That's funny. So I hope you uh, found it enjoyable. This really is a weird Daft Punk album. Especially that Technologic video. Like, what's up with the Daft Punk videos? They're just always doing some wacky stuff. <laughs> well, at least it's original. See ya!